everyone. Welcome back. It's Chuck again with another refrigerant checkup. Today I'm going to be covering some basic information. So if you're new to the field, uh, this should be helpful. Or if you've been around a while and really want to understand where we get some of the nomenclature, the naming and numbering of the refrigerants that we deal with, I'm going to go through the system for you today. Uh, and if you stick around to the very end, I'll have a little shortcut for you that should make it really easy. But I want to go through the whole process. Um, to make sure you get the subsequent parts of this, be sure you hit the subscribe button. But anyway, the system we use for naming, numbering refrigerants uh, has been around a while and is based on the formula you see here. It's basically an R dash, it's capital R dash, and then a three or four or two digit number and some letters after that. So I'm going to explain how each of these uh, digits, what it means, where it comes from. So the far right is going to be the number of fluorines of the number. Next to that, working from right to left, is the number of hydrogen in the molecule plus one. And then we have the number of carbons minus one for the third digit. And then the last digit out here is uh, usually a zero, so it doesn't show up. But in the case of an unsaturated olefin or an HFO type molecule, you'll see a one out there in a four digit number. So uh, let me go through an example here, a very common refrigerant uh, we use a lot, R134A. So forget about the A for the second, um, but we can get the chemical formula for 134A based on this formula here. So if we go up to our formula, we see four is the number of fluorines in 134A. So we have four of those. Three is one more than the number of hydrogens. So for hydrogens, this molecule is gonna have two. And likewise, we have a one, which is one less than the number of carbons. So the carbons therefore is two. So C2H2F4 is the molecular formula. Tetrafluoroethane would be the chemical name. And then when we look at how we would draw that as a structure, we can have two carbon, atoms and then we know from organic chemistry every carbon atom has four bonds associated with it so there's two hydrogen and four fluorines connected to the rest of this molecule and we think about there's a couple different ways we can arrange those um, the two hydrogen we could put one on each side maybe to start and then everything else is going to be fluorine around the molecule. Right. Now there's another way we could draw this, and I'm gonna draw it here uh, underneath. So again, we have our two carbons. All the formula is gonna be the same. Each one is gonna have four bonds to it. But now if we look, is there a different way to arrange these fluorines and hydrogens on here? And obviously one way to do it would be put both hydrogens kind of on the same end. And now everything else will be fluorine. So we have two different structures for the same formula. And if we look at that now in terms of how balanced the molecule is. If we look in the center of this top molecule here, we can see it's pretty symmetrical, pretty well balanced. We have a hydrogen, two fluorines over here, hydrogen, two fluorines over here. So the way the system works is that gets the nominal number. So this would be known as R134. And then another arrangement with the same formula but a slightly different arrangement is going to get the A, lowercase a, designation. So they're both C2H2F4, different isomers or different arrangements, least symmet most symmetrical, going down and least symmetrical. If there was another way to arrange these that was even more unbalanced or more unsymmetrical, it would be 134B. In this case, that's not possible, uh, but that's where we're at. Okay, let me give you one more example here.
Okay, so let's look at uh, an up and coming molecule we've been hearing a lot about. Twelve thirty four YF, and let's see if we can apply this uh, the same rules here. So we know uh, we know it's an HFO because it has a one out here from that digit. But working from right to left, we have four fluorines, and the number of hydrogens is going to be three. Take away that one, so it's going to be two hydrogens, carbons. We have a two, we know that's one less than the actual number, which will be C3. So we have tetrafluoropropene. Um, the way we draw that out, again, it's got three carbons connected to each other there. That's where the propane name comes from. And we know it's an olefin, so it has that important carbon-carbon double bond in there. That's what gives it the short atmospheric lifetime, the very low GWP. And then, Connected here, we have the usual suspects for a total of four bonds to each carbon. And what we have to fill in on those bonds, again, we have four fluorines and two hydrogen. So we could put the two hydrogen down on this carbon. And there's a table where you can look up because the, the arrangements around here get a little more complex the more uh, possibilities you have. And if the rest of these were fluorines, This would be known as 1234YF. And a lot of times we put the HFO out there. Sometimes if it's an HFC, you'll see HFC, CFC, chlorofluorocarbon, whatever it is. But is it 1234YF? If these were switched, and we had a hydrogen here and here, then this would become another isomer 1234 you may have heard of, 1234ZE. Again, so smaller case numbers out here do the arrangement. These numbers in here off of this formula give you the exact chemical makeup of the refrigerant. I hope that was helpful. I got a little shortcut here for you. And a shortcut is really the plus 90 rule. And that says you basically just add 90 to the R number, and then you can read out directly the number of fluorine, hydrogen, and carbons in the molecule. So again, 134A, if we followed this and added 90 to it, This will give us directly now four fluorines, two hydrogen, two carbon. Don't have to worry about whether it's a plus one, minus one. Some people like to use the minus 90 rule. Some people think it's uh, it's obvious without it, but I uh, offer that to you. If it helps you, remember it. Part two of this is uh, going to be the second video. After we understand how all the different uh, molecules and pure components are named, then we start adding them together, blending them together to make blends, azeotropes. And all those have their own numbering system. So I'm going to go through that in the next video. Uh, make sure you check that out. Again, don't forget to uh, hit subscribe so you catch all of our videos. Anything you need to know about refrigerants, give us a shout. Uh, hit me up on my email. I'll be glad to, uh, to explain it to you or find one of my experts uh, who can do it uh, better than I can. But again, thanks for checking out the video, and we'll see you soon. So long.